Uh, welcome to the April 3rd meeting of the Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board. I'd like to call this meeting to order. I'm Rachel Zemberry, Chair of the Redevelopment Board, and I'd like the other uh, members of the board to please introduce themselves. Uh, Steve Rebelak. Eugene Benson. Ken Lau. And we also have joining us this evening uh, the Director of the Pl Department of Planning and Community Development, Claire Ricker, and the Assistant Director of the Planning Department of Planning and Community Development, Kelly Lanima. Thank you for joining us. All right, uh, we will go ahead and move right into our first agenda item, agenda item number one, the 2023 annual town meeting report to town meeting. Um, and I'd like to thank Kelly and Claire for um, preparing the memo based on the hearings and um, the uh, last week's vote and discussion of the Warren articles that are before us for spring town meeting. So I'd like to turn it over to Claire uh, to discuss the, the process for collecting the um, comments of the members of the Redevelopment Board and any, any comments you'd like to make about the report. Sure, thank you. Um, there aren't too many comments I'd like to make about the report. Um, Kelly, thank you so much for putting this together for the board. Um, you know, basically, we've included the elements that are uh, necessary in the report to town meeting. Um, we've thanked Melissa, obviously, for her service on the board. Um, there's a little explanation of the review process. And then, of course, we get into um, the zoning uh, uh, Warren Articles amendments themselves. Um, we start with Article um, 26, which is the Industrial District uh, Development um, Standards. Um, which is where we are going to define or at least establish the design storm criteria um, for stormwater management. There are notes here, discussion that was had last week um, relative to this uh, article um, and certainly would be interested in the board's comments or any changes or edits um, to be made to warrant article 26 and discussion. Great, so let's start with Warren Article 26. I know that there were several comments um, that were submitted ahead of time by members of the board directly to Kelly, who has compiled them um, into uh, the updated document. So I wanted to see if there were any additional um, comments or discussion points on Article 26, starting with Ken. I have none. Uh, Jean? I have none. Nothing. Steve? Great, and I am um, in agreement with all of the proposed um, modifications to the report submitted by the other board members. Fantastic, thank you. All right, we move to Article 27, which is the Solar Bylaw Industrial Districts to adjust or to make really administrative um, addition to the bylaw um, and include the industrial districts under the Solar Bylaw. Um, comments were included in the discussion and incorporated into the amendment language, and then if the board has any further comments or edits, we'd be happy to receive those now. Great, thank you. Uh, start with Ken. I have none on this way either. Great, uh, Gene. Well, the only one is the comment that I made that's on um, page six, which yeah. I think is pretty self-explanatory, and I sort of blame myself a little for not having caught this sooner it happens every year there's but, one that squeaks through <laughs> but when you know when steve and um kelly and i went through this there were so many permutations that we went through so so this one um <clears throat> again is um one where um if it's over 39 feet they have to do some other things and they have to provide at least one additional component. Now, so when we adopted the solar on the roof bylaw last year, that deals with a lot of these, but what happens if somebody didn't go through environmental design review, which is when solar on the roof becomes an issue, what do you do with it? And I think we inexplicably crossed this out, um, and it sort of seemed to me in, in reading it over over the weekend that it made sense to put it back in with just the clause in front of it that says for a project not subject to environmental design review so it catches up to what was missing so okay. that's 
the one thing where I didn't know what other people would think about that, so I wanted just to leave that for people. Uh, can I ask a question related to that? One of the things that um, I want would like to make sure if we do leave it in for the projects that are not subject to design environmental design review is that this still relates back to the um, the exemption it does opportunities I think that's in a section that's just not quoted in this here correct well it's it's right over here it's the top did of, I miss at the top of it yeah the top of this it's right. the exception yep, for maximum yep, yep, yep. height Got so it. it's there yeah so if we don't have it in it they still here we go. they right. still have to choose one extra so all this means is that they don't they don't have an opportunity to choose solar as one of the extras. That makes it sense. It doesn't require them to choose solar. So that's why I thought maybe it needed to go back in with the little clause in front of it. Mm -hmm. And I know Steve had some other thoughts. Well, yeah, the one thing, you know, because this is a, um, you know, in the context of do one of the following, um, I think solar is a is a good option to provide, but my my concern was making it clear that someone that a project subject to six four wouldn't also be able to use this as the one additional thing. But um, I, I think the the suggestion Mr. Benson made to prefix it with in projects not subject to environmental design review, I, I think that clarifies it. Yeah. So that that was the one piece. So of you this. still have the choice of one. You have a choice of one. This just adds solar back to the choice menu. As mm -hmm. one of the choices. As one of the choices. Mm -hmm. okay. In the case that you are not subject right. to environmental right. design review. If There's you're not subject solar. to environmental design review. That makes sense. Yeah, Good I thought crash. so. But any objections to that modification? No. Steve. No. I think that's a great one. Okay. Fantastic. So just to make sure that our so it, instead of striking that out, it now says underlined for projects not subject to environmental design review, comma, and, and then all, all the rest of it. The rest right. Of it. Right. Okay, great. Just want to make sure I got it. Great. Thank you, Kelly. And thank you, Jean, for catching that. Are there any other um, modifications in addition to those that were already proposed? Steve? Yep. I don't have any other. And Ken, you had said that you didn't have any oh. to this item. Great. I'll turn it back over to you, Claire, for Article 28. Great. So moving forward to Article 28, this is truly an administrative adjustment to delete a section that has been deemed by the Attorney General's Office to be not appropriate slash illegal from the zoning bylaw. I don't know if the board has any comments. Okay. No. Uh, Jean? No comment. Steve? No comment. I don't have any other comments um, than what was already submitted. Fantastic. Great to Article 29. All right, Article 29 um, is a citizen petition endorsed by the board. Zoning bylaw amendment, the down, downtown business parking minimums to eliminate the parking minimum in the B5 district, um, which is essentially the business district of Arlington Center. Um, the location of the Russell lot and the uh, railroad lot, um, most, in fact, all of businesses in the zone are within the thousand feet and so the board has voted to support this um, article. Um, I don't know if there's any discussion or any further comment. Okay. No. Jean? No. Steve? Nothing here. I don't have anything either. Fantastic. All article right. 30. Uh, we're on Article 30, one and two family usable open space. Again, this was inserted at the request of James Fleming and 10 registered voters. Um, the board endorsed. Um, this is the amendment to eliminate usable open space requirements in one and two family residential districts. If anybody has any comments on this one? Okay. Nope. Great. And I think um, I think the clarification here is that it's one and two family dwellings since we yes. did add the B districts to this. Okay. Um, 
But other than that, I have no um, additional modifications. Did we add B districts to this? I have none. Jean? Steve? No, I, I thought it, um, here, it? The, the explanation did a nice Before job the, of um, outlining the overlapping yeah. regulations oh, oh, okay. and yeah. so on. So, yeah, no, nothing further here. Oh, Great. Uh, I'm sorry, Rachel. Could you just, um, we added this to B districts as well? The third yes. dot down. Okay, the third dot down. This is rear yard setbacks 20 feet or 20% of lot. Then R answer. zero one two and then in all districts. Twenty feet in all B districts. Fantastic, thank you. Um, article thirty one. Um, <laughs> and allow uh, uh, to see if town meeting will vote to allow for animal daycare use in the industrial district. This was inserted at the request of Kristen Anderson and ten registered voters, and the board voted to endorse. Any discussion? Any, any comments? Can None. Comments? Jean? No comments. Steve? Nothing. I did not have any either. All right. So if we could. And then 32 was just the vote of um, no action. Correct. Sorry. For the yep. um, building affordable housing anywhere. Any comments on the commentary, Kim? Nope. Uh, Jean? No comments. Steve? Nothing here. I think Great. I'm all set as well. Great. So. Um, I believe at this time we would uh, just need to take a vote to see if the board will um, vote to submit the report uh, as amended to town meeting. We didn't amend anything, do we? Uh, we we did. So we made the amendment that um, Jean oh, just Jean. mentioned, and then there were several comments that were submitted, um, and Kelly emailed those out. Um, so that's what I was just okay, sharing sorry. with you there. That's You're okay. Right. Um, so there were several just wording changes with regard to the discussion, not to the actual articles themselves that came through earlier this weekend. So motion. Is there a second? I'll second. We'll take a vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And a yes as well. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you for compiling all of that. It's very well written. And... Um, just as a follow-up to this, Kelly and I um, will work together to create the presentation, uh, the presentations for town meeting. Now that's just for the articles that are inserted at the request of the redevelopment board, the petitioners um, for the individual warrant articles. So James Fleming and Kristen Anderson will be preparing their own presentations for uh, town meeting. Um, the thought was similar to the presentations that Kelly prepared together with Jenny for um, the last several um, meetings in terms of the PowerPoint slides uh, would be prepared. And then I would just prepare a few remarks. I think we're still waiting to hear from Greg, Kelly, is that correct? As to whether or not those will be pre-recorded or whether they'll be delivered live? I think they will be delivered live. This is what, um, Claire, I think you were talking about with Talia regarding yes. the other Live, but okay. just wondering, like, they want them all in one package. And just got it. The, the, the logistics format, are so. Yeah, yeah the right. slides themselves are working to. Right. Okay. I, and I can confirm with um, the manager, etc., about whether we're going to present live or if whether he's going to do okay. recordings. He was a little. I I, ha I have had this conversation with him, and I think he was sort of, you know, he. I, I heard, do what you'd like to do, but I would like to be told what to do. So yeah. <laughs> I'll have a follow-up conversation. Okay, great. Sure. Thank you so much. Um, so these are um, early, but you know, probably not the first night of town meeting. I have no idea how fast this is going to run back in person. Just get them done right. So we'll we'll need to figure that out, and um, I will actually be traveling uh, most of that first week of, of town meeting. So that's something that logistically we'll need to work out. And if there's somebody else from the board, if they come up during that um, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, I think the first night of town meeting is that Monday. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'd be in town to be able to deliver the report. But if, um, if those come up Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, and I do end up going to the conference that I'm currently slated to go to, 
then um, I think we'd need to identify another member of the board who I've could. I've done that in the past. Yes, you, you've worked, yes, yeah. with me on that and even in the past. It's been great. Before you came on the board. And I think I we, yeah. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Um, in the past, they, they, they've always try to pull all our articles off either to the beginning or to the end so they can keep the process rolling. Well, we're also hoping that our articles go on the consent agenda Correct. Mm -hmm. and are not taken off the consent yeah. agenda. That would be ideal. I, okay. Now, I, that would I, be ideal, I, but I, the I, likelihood is in know. question. Well, we don't right. know. I think it's more unlikely for the resident initiated right. articles. But we would still need a representative of yeah. the redevelopment board available to yep. speak if called upon to represent the board's discussion yep. for those resident articles. So we'll we'll work through the logistics and we still have another meeting bef before then. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure that we are prepared for that. Great. Uh, so I believe that that closes agenda item number one uh, and we'll now move to agenda item number two the um, comprehensive permit application for 10 Sunnyside Ave which is an affordable housing development um, which will be heard by the Zoning Board of Appeals um, my understanding is that the Zoning Board of Appeals has requested uh, review and input on the proposed design of and um, the, the, the proposal in general from the redevelopment board. So I will turn it over to Claire to introduce the project. Sure, great. Um, I'm, I'm thrilled to present this <laughs> project tonight. It's not mine. Um, it's a housing corporation of Arlington at 10 Sunnyside Avenue. This is a former auto use um, site um, down close to Alewife Brook, um, Alewife Train, um, blue bike stations, um, et cetera. It's an extremely transit um, friendly site, um, transit accessible location. Um, this is, I believe, 44 units. Is that right? 43. 43 units. I believe they are targeting um, uh, roughly 60% AMI tenancy on these. Um, parking below, some parking um, when commercial. I do not think we're at one space per unit um, for our parking. I think we're down to 30? I think about half. Uh, 23. half 23, 23, 23 spaces. 23 spaces, correct. And that was inclusive. That would be residential and um, commercial. It would only be for the residential. Oh, pardon me. Yeah. Only for the residential. Um, let's see, anything else notable about this project? We did do a interdepartment review and first look at these plans, a first pass, so engineering has seen them, DPW has seen them, um, first responders um, and other relevant departments. Um, and basically that is the project. They're looking to get underway, I wanna say, in construction um, likely this time next year. Um, and then I think it's gonna be about a 14 month build. Great, that's it. Yep. Thank you so much for the introduction. And um, certainly an interesting project, and this is a site that the board is familiar with. Um, <laughs> we uh, saw a very interesting and progressive project here that was proposed, gosh, just about a year ago now, I believe, and uh, which did not go forward. Um, so it's great to see another project proposed at this site, which I think we all agreed at the time was underutilized and ripe for redevelopment. So um, I'll start by turning it over to Ken for any um, comments or feedback that you might have to pass on to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, well, the only thing I, well, we actually looked at this before. Uh, I think when Jenny was still here, uh, she's showing us earlier versions of this. Or- Build out? I don't think this particular then maybe I saw this before somewhere else and I just clicked the bell and I said uh, it's it's a very interesting project and I'm very supportive of this project uh, it's gonna definitely change the area around a lot uh, I used to notice one thing in the middle of that site in this middle of the street there there is a power pole with these tin cans or transformers up on the poles are they gonna get rid of that um, 
I would highly recommend if they can get rid of that because the, the pole is like right outside, I believe the third floor unit's window. I mean, within 10 feet, if not more, not less, I mean. Uh, if they can sort of relocate that up or down the street, uh, that would be one concern. And the other concern is, uh, I, I've been, I've driven down that street at night, it's not well lit. Uh, if they can add more lights or add lighting at the, at the lower perimeter at the parking garage where they have these sort of screen walls, just to make it more f a friendlier place to be. Um, I think having the, the, the lobby is pretty well lit up. I'm just concerned that if you go around with the parking structures and you go around the corner and on the side, I think one keeping this as family oriented as possible, having it feel safe where at nighttime it's dark and you don't know what's crawling around there. Um, for now, I mean, I think as things change, the neighborhood changes, you know, uh, those are my only two comments. If they can sort of get rid of the power pole with the transformers mm -hmm. and adding more lighting around the perimeter. Great, thank you, Ken. I'll move over to Jean. Um, yeah, I too think it's a wonderful project for Arlington, bringing needed affordable units at a good AMI level and in a good location for the reasons that were mentioned. So um, first, they give two, a, two different documents have different amounts which they claim are the required parking amounts which they need waived, and all of the documents are incorrect. <laughs> um, so, some of the documents say it requires only one space per every five dwelling unit. I think that's because they misread the zoning bylaw, which allows that if it's elderly hmm. housing, which this is not. And then another one, in the list of waivers has the old unit space amounts, 1.15 per one bedroom. So none of them have the right amount. So for 43, it should be 43 minus four. And the minus four, and I know we don't all agree about what 8.2.4 means, but in any event, no matter what we say, they're entitled to a 10% reduction in parking for, for affordable housing, either for affordable housing or because they're putting in more than the minimum required in 40B. So at least as I look at this, 43 minus 4, 39 are the required number of spaces. So they're asking for, as I do the math, a 16 space parking space reduction. Um, Bicycle parking, they have much less bicycle parking than required for the residences, and I think that's a mistake. I think when you have these units, you're gonna have people with kids, the kids are gonna wonna have bicycles. Some of these folks are going, at least gonna wanna have bicycles too, because they're close to the Elwife Greenway, they're not that far from the Elwife Greenway to get to the Minuteman bike trail. Um, and I think the trade-off should be, and I'm interested to hear what my colleagues say, that they should have less automobile parking spaces so they can fit in the required number of bicycle parking spaces. Well, and I think all they would need to do is remove one or two additional um, automobile parking spaces to get up to the um, required amount of bicycle parking spaces. So I'm interested to what other people have to say about that. Um, it, it wasn't really clear to me what that office in the left-hand commercial corner was gonna be. Do we think that's gonna be rented out? Do you know? So um, we had been, the HCA is interested in seeking um, 
a way to make that into sort of like a pop-up space or if they could work as a, work with the town and the economic development coordinator to create some sort of a business incubator program that would be one option that they're interested in they're also like they don't have a tenant for that space right now so they're just trying to see like what the overall options are because they have that commercial office space here and then they have a meeting and an office space over in the front and so I think that precise configuration isn't necessarily decided on um, and so that's where it's it's right now they're kind of in flux as to whether that would be that office space would be for the HCA or if it would be combined with the commercial office to be like some sort of re retail space or, or other office space. Yeah, I'm not opposed to, you know, a retail space or a coffee shop or something like that. I mean, uh, they in some of this, I think it, it looked to me like they were saying that this is a mixed use building because of that space, especially when they talked about what the required FAR is things like that so i think it would need to be meaningful space yeah meaningful space and i don't know if that's large enough to be a meaningful space maybe it is for a small coffee shop or yeah, something yes. like that we'll wait, to hear. <laughs> we'll wait to hear from rachel on that but i think it's worth a discussion about that too i think it's a nice idea to put that there to live in the streetscape a little bit but i think we need to understand that um it has almost no open space. I'm considering this is a building with lots of kids, stuff like that, except for the second floor is a very small place. Mm -hmm. But I think the, um, the compensation is it's like a block away from the L Life Greenway, and there's, there's a playground nearby, and, and you know, and there's a nice walking path, and it's green. So I'm not really that concerned about the reduction in, in the open space because of the amenity so close by that they could get to very easily. Um, they, they didn't say whether they were going to meet the street tree requirements mm -hmm. under the bylaw, and I think it would be important that we suggest it because they have, you know, two. Um, yeah, I, I think it would be good if they were to meet the street tree requirements. Um, the, the other thing, I'm interested in what um, Kim and Rachel have to say about this. It's like the plainest facade, mm -hmm. and, and I'm just, you know, and, and, one of, and, and maybe that's the way it has to be, but it, it's just sort of, do we really have to have affordable housing that, you know, has sort of, I don't know, one of you can tell me what to call it, but seems to have just a blank, not very nice, sort of ugly window facade, or can something be done with it to make it look a little better that way? I leave it to our other experts to sort of chime in on that part of it. And um, yeah, I think, I think I'll stop there. Great, thank you, Gene. Steve. So, I'll start, I'd like to start with a question. Um, there are several sheets in the arcus and the floor plans um, where near stairwell, like for example, A105, uh, um, around stairwell A, there are two rooms and a little space that are marked BOH. Right, back of house is what that typically stands for. Oh, okay. So it might be um, janitorial space, Okay. something else, but there are a lot of them. Okay. Yes. Uh, I, I was just, I was just curious. Um, yeah, in terms of uh, overall, I, I'm, I'm supportive of the project. I, I think it's, it will be a big improvement, especially considering the current state of the site. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very happy to see that they are planning to work with the town to put sidewalks on that side of the street. I think that will be a benefit. Um, and I also. You know, I, I think the roof deck with the plantings is also, you know, a rather attractive feature. Um, two things that I noticed in reviewing the materials. One, I think, is not might just be a, a point of consideration. Um, I live on the street, and 
you know, at elevation, the rear of my house is at elevation three and I can hit water with a, a pole digger. Mm -hmm. um, now they're at, um, it looks like they're at about in a, a first floor elevation of about 15 and the bottom of their BMPs is about nine and a half. Mm -hmm. So I mean, the question I was asking is, is the high water table going to be a problem? Um, it looks, I'm guessing not, but it may be worth mentioning this is just a, something to pay attention to. The other thing that I was, is their transportation demand, or the traffic impact study. Um, the build, I was expecting to see some sort of a mode adjustment because it is a fairly transit friendly area and I did not see one in the um, Transportation impact plan. Or, um, this is, I mean, there, it may, I don't know if this was an oversight or a, a conscious decision not to include it, but I, I think that's something that's worth, um, you know, possibly flagging as for follow up. That's what. That's all I have. Great. Thank you very much. So I have a couple of comments that I'd like to. Um, put forth for the ZBA during their review. Um, I agree with my colleagues. I think it's a it's um, a well thought out proposal and I appreciate the composition of an uh, affordable housing uh, development in this particular location. Um, I think that the massing is well considered, um, which really serves to facing Sunnyside, at least, break down some of the scale of the building, especially with the uh, roof deck amenity uh, above the, the entrance to the, to the parking garage. Um, one of the challenges that I have um, to the point that I think Jean was making is specifically with the rear of the building. Um, that is a really uh, challenging facade. It is um, completely flat with no articulation whatsoever. Um, I think you can see that on sheet A3.01. So it's at page 21 in the document. I mean, that's, that's really brutal. And um, I would highly encourage the architect and the ZBA to uh, look at some sort of articulation to the facade, whether it's through relief um, of, of the facade in terms of the, the push and pull there, whether it's through some sort of applied element, whether it's like they did on the front of the facade, um, a change in the, um, the facade material, so the vertical paneling um, versus the more monolithic um, elements. I also was surprised, I, I liked that they, um, this is a very light building as opposed to some of the heavier structures that we've seen. And I, I did think it was really interesting the um, use of, of color um, in a few of the areas. I believe that this is at the stair locations. Um, but I was hoping that that relief might be something that they that they um, take advantage of more often. I think that there's, to, to Jean's point again, I think it's an interesting element that's been introduced and it would be nice to see that um, element or a complementary element added in to again break down this monolithic, um, the monolithic element that we're seeing in front of us. and it, could be that, you know, the um, where they have the horizontal, um, the horizontal cladding versus the um, versus the vertical. Perhaps there is more. You know, you can see that there's a slight mm -hmm. color change there. You know, perhaps there is more of a contrast, which would go a little bit further again if it's just a coloration as opposed to a materiality. Um, I think looking at um, 
I wouldn't add much heavier of a cornice, but you know, perhaps looking at again the um, the depth of that to add just a little bit more depth to the building or to the um, a little bit more of a shadow line along the the top would be interesting. Um, and then looking at the ground floor, and again, I was trying to determine, much like Jean was, what's actually going into that commercial slash office space because it's not really presenting itself as a public space in the way that it is designed from a facade perspective. So um, it would be helpful to see what they were envisioning in terms of does this become a sign band um, above that, that entrance. It's not particularly differentiated from the lobby entrance. Um, so whether or not it's through, as I think Kim suggested, building lighting features that are that mark the entry to the um, to the building lobby and you know the the numbering for or the naming of the building and the signage for the um, entry to the lobby versus the entrance to the um, to the commercial space. I'd love to see those treated a little bit differently as opposed to um, the way that they are now. I also think that it's a missed opportunity to not make that a larger space. 600 square feet is a challenging space to program and um, it would be helpful to know what their thought is with that because I would think that um, at a minimum, I'd want to see something at, if possible, a thousand square feet in order to really make that a usable commercial and viable com rentable commercial space. Um, again, if it's being thought of as a pop-up space that may be a sufficient amount of space, but not knowing what the intent is, um, if it's meant to be least in income generating for the AHA, I think that they would be doing themselves a disservice by not increasing the, the square footage. And I think there's an opportunity to do that. There's a lot of space within that lobby um, if they were to, to look at um, reconfiguring that to, uh, to increase that, that commercial space. Um, The other item, if I just go back to the facade for a moment, that I was trying to understand a little bit more was the materiality um, for the, the two screens that are proposed. Um, the one above, the one that is on the second floor that um, is, the, is the guardrail for in the balcony for the uh, for the green space looks to be like chain link, which I I think is an absolute mistake, um, and I'd like to see that um, either reflect some of the horizontal and vertical elements that they are incorporating in the facade, or um, to include glass. Um, but I I think chain link is the it's the wrong material there. It's very industrial. Um, and then I'm also not a fan of the screening that they are including, um, which also to me reads like chain link, um, in between the um, the arch, or the, excuse me, the, the brick bays of the, the garage. So um, I think I'd, I'd like to understand that material more and would encourage them to look at a screening element that perhaps has a little bit more opacity and visibility to what's happening inside, um, but at the same time, uh, you know, again, does not is not reminiscent of, of chain link. Um, and the only comment I'd have is for them. Other comment I would have for them is to be able to speak to. The particular type of rolling grill that they are using for the garage door. This is something that I know in a lot of the mixed-use properties that we've been reviewing is to understand because those can be very noisy. Mm. Um, there are different styles, you know, whether it's the um, 
you know, with with the uh, the metal. Okay, there's the 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 metal track. The screw track. Yes, exactly. Versus versus Wait, other sorry, times. Screw. Screw track. Right. So um, again, I would just like to keep their their neighbors in mind and think about the um, type of specification for that. Um, for the. Uh, screen door, or excuse me, the uh, the rolling door for the garage. Those were my comments. Ken, anything I like else? To, I like to uh, add on to Jean's comment uh, about the blindness. I, I, at first, I, I didn't want to say anything because I figured they're trying their best to get the most amount of units in here and I didn't want to uh, burden them with too much um, so that, you know, cost another unit you know I don't I didn't want that but I think uh, Rachel's correct if we just if these took an, another more aggressive approach to, to introducing color uh, to these, these boxes that are set back or sliding back and forth it, it can make it more dramatic just by changing the color um, I can give you two sample two examples of this uh, both of them are in Cambridge. 603 Cam uh, 603. Uh, it's right on the rotary uh, by Elway. Uh, the White Shark Parkway? You know, the shopping center is right there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Fresh Park Parkway. Uh, Fresh Park Parkway. Mm -hmm. There's like, like a blue cube up top high. Concrete, 603 Concrete. Okay. Or uh, I think 42 Bay State Road. Tucked behind uh, Danny, Danny, Danny he feels they just have these blocks, but I, I really like the colors of those buildings. How these and it played with the massing. Uh, if they could take a look at that, that could be uh, something that can liven us up a little bit without adding too much cost. And I highly, I highly agree with you about the chain link fence. Uh, I didn't catch that. Well, it's difficult to tell on the rendering, and again. Um, I didn't see when I was reviewing these any specific um, specifications, but that, that's how it's reading in their, in their renderings. Oh, it does read that way. Yes. And uh, that would be a shame right. if they put chain fence there. <laughs> uh, Jean, any additional <coughs> thoughts? Yeah. Yeah, I, I actually don't know what to do about this information. So there was a release on the site that was reported to DEP about 20 years ago, and they did some sort of outcome to it. But at that time, it was still the auto body shop. And I think that it's worth bringing it to the attention of the ZBA, and I've been looking at there's something there about if they're going to move soil around, they need to do some other things about it. And I think what's happened in places at times is that when that there's no site investigation that's completely done, and we can't force that, but I think it's worth bringing to the ZBA's attention what was there before. There was a release that was apparently cleaned up a long time ago, and this place continued to be used afterward, and they may be interested in finding out whether it's an appropriate place to put a residence without doing some more site investigation. I know that might make it very expensive and might kill the project, but I think they, it's worth bringing it to their attention. Are they seeking a loan on this? Yes. Then the bank will make them. That's what I would. That's what I was thinking too. The bank will make them do it. But I think it's worth bringing to the ZBA's attention. Great. Yeah, that was the other one. Thank you, Jean. Steve, any additional comments? Yeah. Um, your, um, Madam Chair, your comments about the screen reminded me of something. I was in looking at the just the the slide that's up. Um, you know, there are. You know, I like the window, and I think there's a, and I like the windows. I I kind of like to see them 
here, here, and here as well um, to just make it less of a solid wall. So yeah, fenestration on the first floor. That's chaining fence that you're pointing to. Right, so in lieu of the, into the parking garage, in, in lieu of the chain link fence? Is yeah, that what you're so suggesting? Right. Um, so it's, so on sheet A101, like there's a garage door and they have, um, you know, there's, there's kind of like flat walls on either side of it. So something, something there. And basically, yeah, so here, something to break up, break it up sort of here and here. So more like a punched opening as opposed to a full screen. Exactly. That's fair. I think that that's not unlike um, the way that the proposed 40B development on Mass Ave was treating their, um, theirs was a, a little bit more, there was more of a, um, a uh, stem wall, and so, so it read more like a mm -hmm. punched opening than yeah. than a full screen. Mm -hmm. so, any other uh, feedback for the ZBA? I have a question for the yes. board, and that is this: um, We've talked a little bit about more bike parking. We've talked a little bit about let's make sure we have enough. Um, space for units and parking, different things, open space. What if we removed the token commercial space that they've included on the first floor? Is it something that the board considers um, paramount to this project to deliver at least some commercial square footage? I think a, a follow-up question would be, would this be better served as a programmable space for tenants either a phone room or a computer room, whatever, given you know what we've learned recently from the pandemic and remote workspaces and different things like that. Maybe I'll, I'll start off by saying I think if it's not a if they can't make this a viable, leasable, commercial space, um, I think that in a building like this, having a rentable, programmable community space for the residents is something that would be a wonderful amenity and that's something that um, often is used for celebrations, family gatherings, etc. Um, those can be hard to come by in town and um, I think that it could be an interesting space for that. My only concern is that that is, um, that is a, a, a nice corner of that space and for it to be unutilized um, for the majority of the the time if, if that's what it is and, and they don't have the I would be concerned if they don't have the ability the AHA to program that mm -hmm. and provide programming within that space mm -hmm. um, for for the tenants in addition to allowing them to to rent it from time to time mm -hmm. um, if they didn't have that means I would much prefer it as a commercial space I I think it doesn't have to be a commercial space as I see it. Of course, then they'd have to ask for some more waivers from the ZBA. Right. Um, I think on the f second floor, there is a community room. Already. Yeah, right before you get into the balcony. Yeah, there's, right. there is a community room there already. I don't know if that is sufficient to meet um, what you were talking about, 727. Yeah, I mean, that's bigger than the... Feet. Commercial so space, that, yeah. right? So, so they have some of that already, um, with a bathroom attached to it. So I thought that was a nice thing for them to do. Clearly, they could have another space on the first floor, or not. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, to be quite honest, while we're going. <laughs> in that space, one of the challenges with having a community space on the second floor is now they have to bring people up if into, gonna. right, if, if that's going to be, again, usable for the residents with family, friends, outside, 
folks, it, where I've seen it most successful in these types of mixed use buildings is if it's within an amenity yeah. space um, before you get into the um, individual units. So hmm. if there are areas, for example, the meeting, the office space, et cetera, if that is better served by relocating to the upper floor and perhaps the bike parking moves to that space so that again you can enlarge the commercial enlarge slash office space that would personally be my yeah. preference steve thoughts um yeah i was looking looking at the floor plan for the, the first floor plan and you know thinking well if how would how would you make it bigger and it's You'd have to you'd have to shift things a lot of things around in order to do that. Um, I agree that 600 square feet is small, <laughs> um, and something larger would be, you know, would would be more viable. Um, you know, I don't have any specific suggestions on how to get there. <laughs> <laughs> Ken, do you have a preference? I've been thinking hard. That's a good, very good question you brought up. Um, and he, he, I think they did the best they can with that layout. I can't see yeah. him relocating the trash room or the bike uh, parking and moving, switching with the meeting room and office so that you can have the ability to make it bigger. Because I think not having a trash room on the front door right there is not good or having a bike room you could put the bike room, you could access that from the um, yeah, but then it's garage. Oh, but then hold this whole facade here now, which is a bike room, as opposed to having some sort of activity. Yeah, I see, I see the point. But it's already underneath it. I just don't see what would go in there right now. Um, there's a commercial space over here. Uh, there's a garage right here. And I believe there's another garage right across the street. And... I think that's to the question I asked before. What are who are they planning what to lease this? Yeah, that's that's what you know what I mean. And I'm I'm trying to think hard now. Like, right. What can we, what can you get out of that? And going back to your question, if we can't get anything out of it, can we just put it back in? And you know, and you guys are right. Make it, it, I mean, part of the overall even putting a small daycare center in there won't even work. Uh, it's too small. Uh, there's no play, you know. I mean, there is a play, there is a daycare center right at Kitty Corner from here mm. uh, that used to be a car dealership. Um, I, I don't know. It's a real, I, I have no answer for that, and I, I have no real good comeback. I just all I can say is a good question. I'll leave it at that. Um, I appreciate the discussion. I think the ZBA might as well. And, uh, yes. And HCA. Thank you. Yeah. I think, I think part of the reason it got to this point was because they had really wanted to explore going through the redevelopment board for permitting instead of a 40B. The restrictions in a, on an apartment building exclusively are, are very severe. <laughs> yes. You can't build one there. You cannot. Right. No. Um, right. Because of the open space and setback requirements. Right. And so then they started exploring mixed use and I think they kind of ended up with continuing to think about mixed use and in part of it thinking about like well what if they expanded some of their office space um, so that may be the other option of what ends up happening is that they just have additional office space or satellite space within this building but it's kind of the origins of how they got there and now they're with this <laughs> I mean, it's interesting since they have no, obviously there is green space nearby, but if this becomes some sort of a space where, um, you know, whether it's a, a, I don't necessarily say a gym, but, you know, again, some place that people can be active and um, use the space and activate the space regularly, um, that to me that that could be interesting for them to explore like a little right. a little small dance studio or yoga place maybe yeah sure or uh, um, 
But again, I, I think that's part of the a AHA needs to um, think about what they can program they can put in there. and um, whether that this is part of their pro, I don't know whether that's part of their pro forma, whether they've worked that into this either in terms of having any of that leasable income. I mean, they did a great job with the, um, oh gosh, what was the, was that on Broadway, the other property? Right, with that commercial space. They did a wonderful job with that commercial space. So, I mean, I think that it is possible to find a wonderful, um, appropriate use for this commercial space, but um, would be really interested in what they're thinking about. Great. Um, so what I'll do is I'll take these comments and put them into a memo. I can send them back to you all just for one final review before they get sent off to the ZBA. That just out of curiosity, since what, I mean, one of the major uses of the ground floor is parking. It, what would be in terms of prioritization would which is more valuable park tenant parking or commercial space I mean what when I say valuable I value it's not not caught not dollar but which would we think is more important commercial space I think I think so too because uh, well, we used to talk to Pam um, well, she built her uh, housing project most of her parking spaces out back were empty. Mm -hmm. And um, so I don't, th I, I don't think they're gonna be parking challenged in this project here. And uh, I kind of like Jean's idea about uh, taking away some of the parking and putting more bike parking there. Um, and even, or even, uh, I would call it stroller parking. Uh, no, I'm, I've, I've been in a lot of projects where you go down in the garage near the elevator and you see these strudels of strollers all over the place. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they don't take them in the elevator, you just leave them down there. So I, I, I just think, you know, dedicating a few parking spaces near the entry there, you have bike parking there already, you just take the next two over and, you know, some strollers will make it easier for families to. Uh, transport food and the kids and you leave it down there and go back inside and take the elevator up I don't know I, I'm inclined to agree I, I would like to you know given the trade-off I I would favor more commercial and less parking but yeah thank you thank you for bringing us forward. thank you thank you for your thoughts absolutely all right um, so we'll now move to agenda item number three uh, 2023 special town meeting outreach and engagement and I'll turn it back over to Claire. All right, thank you. So um, we are putting the bulk of our work this year, um, zoning articles that the board had asked staff to pursue, especially as they relate to the business districts. Um, we did have um, at least one um, uh, business district uh, amendment proposed uh, by a community member, um, but that's not, um, you know, wasn't necessarily generated, although supported by the board. And so really what we're looking for, we had talked about looking at open space and business districts, rear yard setbacks, the step back requirements. I don't know if we did reduced height buffer area. I know we had talked about no um, single story uses. Um, I think what we're looking to talk about this evening, though, is how the board would like staff to handle the communications and outreach about these um, economic development articles. Um, and honestly, what would uh, have us end up with some really, I think, um, some bigger changes to our business district, but obviously, I think, well, you know, well thought out and, and much needed. Um, so we're looking to spur a discussion on how we might best communicate that to the public in the fall okay. and what the board might uh, like to see happen. All right, uh, let's jump into the discussion. Ken, would you like to share your thoughts first? Well, I want to start off with a question. And uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is about commercial space, isn't it? You're mad because I asked that one. No. Okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, you know the outdoor dining on the sidewalks? Yes. Uh, that's something that the uh, 
select board votes on every year to grant. Correct. Um, w could we maybe talk about maybe introducing that into a, uh, a zoning article where it could be uh, something that is available in certain areas for uh, for some of the business districts to have available to them. So it's no longer up to the whim of the select board. I'm not saying it's a whim, but you don't you're not relying on a select board to have the opportunity to dine out. I, I think sort of dining out and having that kind of festive streetscape is what we want to strive for. And if uh, a restaurant owner knows that that's available to them, as opposed to saying it, it can be granted from year to year, but they can plan on that, it could be a business plan that they might embrace and take more of a chance on with us. I just bring that up to debate here, that's all. Yeah, I think it's an interesting comment. Obviously, when Tate was recently in front of us, it was, um, it's a messy line between, I think, what the redevelopment board would like to um, be able to Kim's point to coordinate together with the applicants with regard to activation of the street and ensuring that there is enough thought and, um, but frankly, I'd like to review the design of some of those because yeah. yes. there is some a of them really wide nice and some are, variety yes. of quality <laughs> in this town of the outdoor dining. Yeah. Um, and so I think that if there is an opportunity for us to work together on an article with the select board by which we transfer some of the oversight of that um, so that it is reviewed together with the project, I think that is an excellent suggestion and something that I think, you know, would be a, a good conversation together with the select board in terms of what they feel they need to retain oversight of in terms of um, how much, if at all, they, they need to retain oversight of that particular piece of a project versus, again, looking to bring that into the overall design and quality of the use, as you're suggesting. Well, I would even think in terms of the town. I mean, does the town want those? And if they do want those, where they want them and what type they want. And then I would say, I wouldn't necessarily say if you want that, you have to bring it up to the ARB for review. I would say we make it as of right with certain guidelines and so forth that they are eligible for. So I'm going to say something a little snarky. Please. Um, <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> well, you know how the town manager put in some warrant articles without notice to us? Yes. Mm -hmm. We could put in a warrant article <laughs> that, that, that says, you know, the town must allow this on public streets. I'm not saying we should really do this because... Because we're a considerate body. Well, because we're a considerate exactly. body. But um, I think it's worth raising with uh, the select board. I don't think zoning extends to the public street, so I don't think we can do it on a public street. But what... What's interesting to think about, though, if you think about the building that we approved recently, 191 to 200 Mass Ave, yeah. where they have that little space, yes. if we could find some way to incentivize that when we're doing, making the changes to the business zoning rules, so that somebody would say, sure, I'm going to pull my building back so much because I'd like to attract a restaurant, you know, and I'd like to do that. I was, I was in New York recently and they now have all of these new zoning rules about, you know, parks in the buildings and things like that. And what I thought was, and we're not New York, right? But what I thought was really interesting is they had tables and, and chairs and, and concession stands and things like that. So it just, makes me think maybe there's something we can do to incentivize pulling back the building from the building line so that they can do things like the one at 191 to 200 
mass ed did. And we should probably also talk to the select board about, you know, what they can do to make it more attractive on their end also. But I think it's a great idea. It's just how do we, how do we make that happen? Yeah. Steve? But you didn't answer their question. No, I was going to. So I was going to finish it's discussing funny. this. Yes, and then we'll get back to the actual <laughs> question that Claire <laughs> asked. But thanks for throwing us a curveball into that around here. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> An interesting discussion. All right, Steve. I was just going to answer Claire's question. Okay. <laughs> Please jump in. I, th I think we do have this project to establish the design standards. Yes. Take another look at design yeah. standards, and I think thinking about the public realm yes. um, and some things that aren't necessarily, I think there's a way that we don't want to overly complicate the zoning um, or necessarily have to get a two thirds vote at town meeting. And I think if we think about some of these things from a design standard perspective, it does give the board more flexibility to think about it on a project by project basis instead of like establishing specific dimensional guidelines that may end up becoming a hurdle for various projects going forward. So I think we could think about having the curb be an element of design guidelines and maybe even then broker that conversation with the select board about, all right, let's think about some design standards for how these parklets should look. And maybe the select board has the jurisdiction for the space, which is like the just the the block on the sidewalk or the or the parking that you use, but then the ARB has more jurisdiction over the look and feel and what it means to be walking through or right. using the space. We tried to do that a little bit with Alley when these first you know, yeah. um, came up, but I, I agree. I think the design standards and quite frankly the master plan, the update to the master plan would be an appropriate place for us to address some of these as well. Um, the, the point about an ARB select board permit or some sort of um, design standard or, or any kind of standard is, is well taken. What is happening you know, in real time right now in the office is that uh, businesses are coming in looking to renew their permits. You know, they're putting their stuff out. Maybe it's in the same place as last year, usually not. And so we are going back out as, the, as they're trying to, you know, I'm thinking specifically of Nero Donut Villa and then um, Tai Tai Moon, Tai Moon are all going to be in one line. We have this laid out beautifully. Nero went first and totally <laughs> did something right. that isn't going to work for the other two. So rather than create more work for folks, let them know what's expected. Um, Nero came in, they got their their permit, you know, all on the up and up, but we had no idea, you know, that it was happening, that they were putting the things out and etc. So I think that you know. Either whether it's you know stricter design guidelines or some sort of review by the ARB, especially if it's a, a funky situation like those three in a row, um, the point is really well taken. I do think we need to, to get a little more oversight over that. Thank you. Yes. One more. Question. We want to go. Yes. Well, no, no, no. Now, now that now that we've diverged, I'd like to respond to Kelly. <laughs> um, what I, I think one of the things I'd like to see us as a municipality think about is curb management oh. um, because that is I mean it is it's the inner it's the interface between the public and the private realm um, and the way it's you programmed is incredibly important not I mean yeah it's not yes the question of you know vehicle parking versus um, table seating but there there are a whole lot of other things like we you know, we should probably do something more with like loading areas, especially for deliveries and that sort of thing. Um, as a long-term thing, you know, as a long-term objective, um, I would like to see us do something serious with curb management. Okay, right. back okay. to Thank what you, you were saying. <laughs> okay, then we're gonna move on to Claire's actual question. Yes. Okay. Which I don't remember anymore. <laughs> I'll remind you. Okay. I was going to say, that is public way, right? So we can't really permit. But isn't like what's in front of uh, Nero and... Donut Villa. Donut Villa and uh, Chinese, uh, was it? Tai Moon. Tai Moon. That's public, right? That's a square that we designed. Uh, that's the public right-of-way, yeah. What? That's the public right-of-way, yeah. Yeah, and that's public. I mean, it's not... Mm -hmm. 
So we designed that space for outdoor seating or whatever. That's what I'm, so can we do this with other parts of the business district? And I'm not just talking about public seating, but I'm talking um, having like maybe dog areas at the corners or intersections where you have um, uh, what's called drainage gardens, you know, where instead of having the water go right into the, the sewer drain, you have a garden there. We, mm -hmm. have, we have a few in town. Yes, and those, yes. Are, those are great, but it stopped. Right. I think that's a great idea. And I, I'm getting off topic. I, okay. I think so. Um, I think that we should absolutely, though, put that in, in our you know goals of something yeah. that once we get through some of these zoning topics that we do need to talk about how we would like to start introducing those to the public and um, moving forward so that we're ready for town meeting in the in the fall that we then um, look at some of those nodes of opportunity <laughs> okay right I'll, I was I will so I'll just if I may I'm sorry Madam Please. Chair. I'll, I'll go back to my original um, question so, so, so I'm, I'm looking at um, the memo from uh, January 19th, which was updated on the 23rd. One, two, three, four, nine. five, six, seven, nine. Yes. We had nine um, uh, proposed amendments yep. uh, directly related to business districts. Open space, rear yard, setbacks, step back requirements, the reduced height buffer, which is no more single story buildings, um, corner lot height minimums, the Arlington Heights Business District, which I think was, a, you know, we were contemplating a map change for that, and then the ARB jurisdiction over the industrial districts, which I think is a is an outstanding question as well. Um, so this will be going in front of a special town meeting along with MBTA communities, and obviously we've launched into a massive campaign <laughs> around MBTA communities and continue to. Um, you know, obviously that is a, a priority, um, but also I think a priority is to move our economic development goals forward, looking at, w you know, these original thoughts that we had, is this something we can want to continue to advocate for in the fall, are there changes we want to make? We can definitely, you know, commercial design guidelines is, is on my list in terms of projects that I know that the board wanted to get done in the next year or so. Um, and obviously the ARB select board permit as it relates to outdoor dining is something that is, you know, absolutely need, we need to take a look at. Um, but what would the board recommend here, I think, in terms of how we might go about either an education campaign or getting the word out about some of these economic development um, ones, that, uh, articles that we've talked about. Um, Jean, would you like to start? Oh, sure. <laughs> Now that I'm reminded of the question. She won't ask me it, again, so. <laughs> I'm, in, in a way, it's the opposite of MBTA communities where it's like, where are we going to put this? This is like, here are the things that we think are necessary. So I think one of the things that we've talked about in, in, in the past is actually having some diagrams and things like that so people get comfortable with what the change might look like. Right, so that's clearly um, one piece of it. Um, second is, we've said a lot of these things we think are necessary because it's too hard to do economic development now in town with the small lots and, and with, with these sorts of things. So we would really need somebody to give us some actual examples of here's what it is now on these lots and here's what it would be if these sorts of things happened. Um, and then some, you know, some economic analysis of, of, of some of the advantages in terms of, um, of tax rates and, you know, things like that because this should generate some more commercial tax revenue for the town. So I think those are the types of things that we would want to put together um, as, as sort of a starting point for those things. And then in terms of outreach, I think it might be helpful to start with some conversations with the business community since we are ostensibly doing this 
um, for that, which is like, you know, the chamber, the, the real estate, um, yep. folks who represent a lot of people like that, to get their input. So we, we're not sort of doing this blind, but they may have some excellent suggestions about this too. And if they think it's a good idea, I think they can help us think through um, how to present this um, to the public. And then I think at that point we need to get back together and say, now that we've done this, now that we've done that, how do we roll this out? How do we roll it out? Like how, how do we roll it out? So At least those are my initial thoughts. Interesting. Okay. Thank you, Jean. I, I'll just say, um, just to follow up with that before, Steve um, mm -hmm. mentions that I, I've ha I had some initial conversations with Beth Locke who, oh, from the chamber who yeah. was very interested in learning more about what we've proposed in terms of supporting businesses and business development in town. Um, and was interested in how the um, the chamber, which is really um, focused on reinvigorating their activity within the town, um, how how we might be able how they might be able to support some of the the That's goals great. of the redevelopment board as well. That's awesome, Steve. Okay. So yeah, there's in terms of outreach, I would you know, going. Sort of like Mr. Benson, I I would suggest with starting with the landlords and members of the business community, um, because that's kind of like where the I don't know if the buck starts with them or stops with them, but you know it, it's an important group to get on board, um, and it would certainly you know not work to our advantage if these ideas came out and we found out that a number of landlords or businesses opposed them. Um, so I'd. I would, ideally, I'd like to, you know, think of this as trying to work in partnership with some of some of the landlords and businesses in the Chamber of Commerce, and I think once we have a story that works for them, it will make it easier to sell. We'll have something more compelling to. Um, go to the public with we want it to sell our itself we don't want to sell it if yeah we, we the I, distinction <laughs> yeah Ken, thoughts? I agree with Gene what Gene said I think we should start with uh, the realtors and brokers and see what is what are people asking for and I mean, they're, they're the first ones online to say, hey, I, I have a space available, and they're trying to uh, rent it, lease it, and they have all these comments back from all the people say, oh, I'm not interested, or it's too complicated to get this thing permitted in this town. Um, there's not enough parking. There's not enough foot traffic. I don't know. Anything uh, along those lines there. Um uh, you know, I mean, I've, t I've talked to several restaurant owners, and the first thing they always ask me is uh, foot traffic, parking, and how many people live there. And they'll say, by how many, what's the density of people living there is what, what can support their business, and that's what they're looking for. And so we've got to start understanding that better. And uh, I agree with you. I think, I think we had talked about this before, uh, I call them vignettes, a little renderings mm -hmm. off a of SketchUp, and say this is a uh, architect's or, or um, a vision of what this area could look like. It, well, what we're trying to get at, you know, you know, walkable streets, maybe some, you know, your blade signs coming out, focusing the streets there, um, green trees, bushes, whatever, you know, wide, wide sidewalks, well lit, with you know one or two stories above it or whatever and then going back to that sketch it model showing the density of what it could be mm -hmm. what we have right now and what we plop on there they can make that happen so they can actually see it and visualize it mm -hmm. and that takes time and money I mean the renderings are not going to be cheap and then you're working with somebody to do that vision is not going to be uh, easy 
So if I can just add to that, um, I, th I think what Ken is saying is absolutely right. I think that the visualization of the possible <laughs> is, is foundational to having any of these meetings, even with the, with the chamber, you know, in, in some ways. And I think being able to go through those nine different points and identify which can be explained through a diagram and which actually need, again, this visualization piece, because I don't think that all of them do. Um, but I think that the one that is the, going to be the most challenging for people to, again, visualize the possible and why it's important to make as drastic a change as we are suggesting is the Arlington Heights Business District overlay. Yeah. I think that helping people understand these are our limitations. This is why it's so hard for somebody to put together multiple parcels of you know differing zoning and wildly restrictive um, wildly res restrictive compounding zoning regulations when this overlay district would remove those barriers and allow you to create X is something that would be really compelling but we have to be able to tell that story in order to have people believe in it and I think we who live in this world can visualize, but it's zoning's challenging for people to understand. And so being able to um, provide that is, is really important. And I think the other thing that we're going to be needing to contend with, and it's something I heard in the MBTA Communities Working Session, just as one of many, many examples, Mike Champa and I were actually in the same um, small breakout room, and we heard from two different people, well, there's lots of available space in town. And we both had to say, hold on, hold on. There is vacant space that is unmaintained, un unproductive, and unusable of the newer or more recently renovated vacant space. There is very little. Yes. Um, and there is a big difference between vacant commercial space that has been invested in and is ready for a and uh, that, that has been adequately prepared for a future tenant versus that which requires so much remediation and investment that it is almost unusable okay. for the majority of tenants who would come into town. Mm -hmm. So I think being able to tell that story, because that is something that, again, just in one meeting we heard multiple times, yeah. and when it was explained, people understood, but there is a general misconception that I think we will need to contend with. Building a 600 square foot storefront is not going to shift the tax base. Exactly. Right. right. Yeah. Good example is um, at the Heights. The, pick the pick old, a spot in the Heights. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the old post office. Absolutely. That's it's one. just a long, leaders. narrow, straight, way, way back there. Who's going to rent that space with this little small right. post office? <laughs> Yeah, but, I think understanding footprints and yes. uh, just what, what kind of yep. plates, floor plates to, exactly. is super helpful to understand, yep. and that's where I think like... Your diagram would be perfect for that. The diagram would be perfect yeah. for that, but yeah. I, again, I think when you start looking at what happens when you have parcel after parcel that changes yep. zoning and yep. how challenging that is versus an overlay which allows you to, to see something in a larger... Um, in a larger and more comprehensive point of view is that that's really impactful. Mm -hmm. So what are our budgetary <laughs> <laughs> opportunities here? I believe that we had last town meeting there was money put aside for these commercial the guidelines. commercial design guidelines. That is correct. Um, to me, this is a precursor to being able to do commercial design guidelines, so I don't know if that funding is at all available for this or if there is any additional I will ask. funding that could be made available for um, this type of visualization and, I think, um, economic analysis, which somebody, I Jean, see. you, you yeah. mentioned, which is really important as well. Okay. No 
just sort of building on what Rachel said, it would be interesting to take a block in the Heights or somewhere else and say, if the overlay happened, here are the opportunities that would exist that don't currently exist as a way to show the before and after possibilities. I think it might be interesting too for us to go back into the Arlington Heights Neighborhood Action Plan Improvement, whatever those words put together were, <laughs> um, uh, because there was some of that work being mm -hmm. done. So um, mm -hmm. I think, and I think that was done with an outside consultant, if I remember correctly, MAPC. MAPC did it. So I think, you know. I think at a future meeting, perhaps, you know, if we all go back through that and see yeah. if there's anything worth mining um, from that, that might be a, a starting point for us to, to talk about. Where would you get that? What's that? Where would we get that? I'll send that out. Okay. Yeah, oh, it's on, it. it is on the, it's, it's, on the it's a little website. buried, but it's on the website. Okay. No, just email me. Okay. Email um, and I will say that there is a committee that hasn't met in a year but there is a committee for that implementation plan who was very active and very engaged and they might be people to pull into this as well right so it sounds like we may pin down the narrative and do some initial stakeholder reach out outreach mm -hmm. to commercial folks I love the idea of reaching back out to the Arlington Heights um, group yes. as well um, you know pin down a narrative, try to start telling the story with visuals. Um, I can look into, I mean, commercial design guidelines, this absolutely I think would apply to our, you know, commercial zoning changes. Mm -hmm. I, I don't see a, a lot of issues with that. Um, and then um, look into what kind of uh, uh, materials we'd like to produce, visualizations, um, et cetera, and go from there. Perhaps come back in front of the ARB with strategy presentation um, I'm not I, I, I might have to put that out to a little flurry earlier in May I think but I think that's fine okay yeah. great yeah. and we're targeting October yes for special town meeting okay so we'd have to have this in place in September right right correct we're gonna run out of time fast some of the stuff will take time But so, I, I, again, I think it's I think it's the plan of what is a diagram, what is a visualization, yes. what needs an economic analysis because yes. some of those don't. Right. Some of those yeah. are pretty straightforward. I don't know. Maybe. maybe it, I mean, take the. You can no longer have one-story buildings. We need to know that people are going to be willing to redevelop taller buildings and we need to know the economics of that yeah. and the, you know, the economic fallout of the benefit of doing it that way. Because I think you're right about the Arlington Heights, but we, what we propose goes way beyond Oh, Arlington sure, what they Heights, did, yeah. 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 Right, so we have to... The, the dimensional... Yeah, um, some of the, a lot of the dimensional things go way beyond Arlington Heights and the, Nice if there was some way to package those. I was just more responding to Ken's suggestion that we take a block at right. Arlington well, Heights. Right, because right. I, I think some of that work has in fact mm -hmm. been done, yeah. and I would hate not to yeah. utilize some of the good work that's already been done. Right, and maybe take a block somewhere else. Now, did I read correctly that the block that had Tango Restaurant on was sold? That block of buildings it was sold. sold you don't no, know? there's a couple buildings uh, south of there that, are, that have been on the market. But Tango, that, that block that was block not is still open. with the same ownership. Huh. Okay. Because that's going to get redeveloped. It's one story high. You know, some empty spaces. It would be interesting to, in addition to Arlington Heights, maybe see that as another model mm -hmm. of, you know, what could be done if we made some of these changes. Would it be helpful perhaps if the four of us went back through the nine proposed articles and um, each 
thought through what are what do we what do I feel are the visualization or compelling um, analysis that needs to be prepared for each of these in order for um, us to feel like we are able to make the case for why and help people understand the why. And then sent that to Kelly and Claire to compile to just see, you know, again, if we're all on the same yeah. page so that again, we don't, if we see, if we all are in agreement that something just needs a diagram, but something needs something more, then we, sooner rather than later, it would be helpful, I'm sure, to, to know that so that we can start planning ahead. So maybe that's something within the next, yeah. before our next meeting, we can um, take a look at those, get some thoughts off. Is our next meeting on Thursday, or is that? No, it's in two weeks. Can't, oh, so we don't have that meeting anymore. No. It, it was is. still on my calendar. It was on mine, too. <laughs> right. Six. So we don't have another no, one. No, we do week. not. We do not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I believe that the 24th is our next meeting, which will be a 7 to 7.50 meeting. Yeah, right. We'll seven. get to that in new business. Yeah. I can also send out, we had prepared some memos back when we thought these were going to be for spring. Yeah. Yes. Um, so okay. I'll send that out. I'll send out a link to the Army Tonight's Neighborhood Great. Action Plan. Great. Any other related economic development studies that I know of, um, so we'll just make sure you all have that information. Perfect. Does that give you enough to start? That's great. Start? Yes, I appreciate the uh, conversation. Thank you. Absolutely. Each fall article. Okay. Um, let's see. So that concludes uh, agenda item number three. Agenda nine. Agenda item number four is open forum, but we do not have anyone from the public who has joined us this evening, so I will close that agenda item and move to agenda item number five, which is new business. Um, so I'd love to chat about the timing for our next meeting, which is the 24th, which is before town meeting, um, and logistics for that. So town meeting is being held in town hall or at the high school? In Town Hall is what I've heard. In Town Hall. Okay. So in theory, we could meet here, or we could meet in the annex. We could, yeah. Um, and then I'll pop over to town meeting as soon as we adjourn. So we could meet 7 to 7.45. Well, wait a minute. Make our way over. If it's town meeting, don't we all go, or we don't have to go? You don't have to. In the past. I have actually never been to an in-person town meeting. <laughs> oh, you'll love it. <laughs> we all, we all I started, are seated at a table on the edge. Uh, look, right by the door. And I was supposed to be there for the, first, for the one uh, the okay. in 2020. But um, my understanding of the way things used to be, and I will preface this by saying that the, my least favorite thing is, but that's the way we always did it. But just my understanding of the way that things used to be done is that the Redevelopment board all came to the first night, yes. and then because um, we always our our articles are always up the first night. They, right, right, right. Okay, and right. then once our articles were done, we 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 were options to stay or, or leave. We Got all it. left, but you, but you left out the best part, yeah. where everybody gets up and sings. I don't know any of these things. We did not do that during. Uh, the no, best part is the bake sale. And oh, yeah. the, the table is in a prime position to get to the bake sale. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, you know, once we have more information from the town moderator as to the order in which he is planning on taking the articles and um, whether anything will be taken out of order and how many we have on the consent agenda this year, um, because we'll need to actually set up a time what we've done in the past is that Sandy, Doug Heim, myself, and I think Eric is the new select board chair, okay. um, and you need to set up a meeting where we can, with the town moderator, go through what we would like to propose to be on the consent, consent agenda. agenda. Okay. Again, that's how we've done it in the past. 
And she likes using that phrase tonight. We do not have to do it that <laughs> way. But if that's something we need to get on the calendar, we should probably try and get that calendar that sooner rather than later. That being said, our 20, meeting on the 24th would need to be 7 to 7.45 p.m. in order to make that work. Is that a challenge? No, no, I, and also we should have Let's it in Let's see what that. else we have on that agenda. The only other thing <laughs> on that agenda is uh, the review of rules and regulations. So okay. we got two items that needed to be on the board's Yep. One was um, waiving fees for circumstances under which the board may wish to waive fees. Yep. And then the second was um, it's solar. So, because the what attorney we general wanted, was solar by the law. What we wanted on the, along in the environmental, in the um, permit application for solar. Right. It's, it's what we initially had proposed to put in the bylaw, and Jenny said, don't put it in there. Just put it in the rules and regulations. Put it in the rules and right. regulations after it. And we can meet over there, so, so it's easy to just sneak over to town hall. Right in the annex. Yeah, right in the annex. Yep. Second floor, that old. Although okay. this isn't a big distance if we can't get that room. No, but. <laughs> okay. Anything else that you need from this board? We should probably update on the well, select board tonight is hearing, um, is reviewing the memo that we put together. Um, that we reviewed and voted on as a board for Article 14 related to the strategic growth article and the request for um, an MOU for the uh, changing of uh, oversight of the town held, the redevelopment board held town properties. Right. Warren Article 21, 22, and 23 are the three, pro uh, the three properties that we discussed in our meeting last week. Um, transferring those properties back to the town. Um, Doug Heim and I have uh, drafted, uh, gone through a few initial drafts um, of an MOU. And I've spoken with Sandy Pooler about it, and um, uh, I have a, a cover memo related as well. And so we'll continue to negotiate the MOU. It is part of um, the redevelopment board's vote um, to uh, support those Warren articles, you know, on the condition of the MOU. Um, and that is how it will go in front of the select board this evening, um, with the note, you know, that I'm working with the town uh, town council um, to develop an MOU to the mutual satisfaction of all parties. So that's where that stands tonight. And last time we didn't know if Mr. Diggins was going to withdraw his warrant article. We did not. We do did we not know now? now? We do, um, as of Friday, it was on. Oh, okay. so. Yes. Ah. Did he get reelected? Yes, he yes, did. He did. Okay. he did. As did Diane. He did. Diane, Diane. So, uh, more to come on that after this evening. Yes, more to come after this evening. Great. Any other new business? I do have a, a little new business. Um, one is that uh, we, we, I think we spoke about it uh, a little casually last week, but I have identified a candidate um, for the board. Um, I think, it, um, you know, just speaking with each, with each of you sort of individually, you know, there was um, some thought about uh, maybe sort of expanding the candidate pool, um, potentially to someone in construction or a planner, um, and that a few of you might reach out to other contacts that you have. Um, I think I'm interested in knowing, you know, we've, you know, I've, I've approached four, four or five people at this point, um, do you, would you like the, uh, to continue to look for someone with the you know the skill set um, that we've discussed, planner, uh, potentially someone in construction, or even a, you know maybe a, a housing developer or someone mm -hmm. along those lines, or should we um, you know make a decision to offer it to to someone who's indicated interest previously, but but may not necessarily have the skill set that we're looking for right now. Thoughts, Gene? I, I had spoken to a person who I thought would have been excellent, I know. and he said he's too busy. But I sent you an email about another person, okay. and I didn't mention that person's name, but I gave you a little bit about 
the background, and I said, should I reach out to please him? Please do. Oh, you want me to? Yes, please, especially okay. if it's uh, someone who, who is uh, not necessarily an architect. Is the person is okay. not. Has an <laughs> MCP from MIT uh -huh. and does transportation planning. Okay, that would be interesting. We can't fault that person for that, but that would be great. <laughs> I'll, I'll, see if, I'll see if the person is interested. That'd be good. I have not broached it. I appreciate that. That's thank you, Jim. Great. Uh, I think I think expanding is is fine, and um, now that the election is over, I can think more about <laughs> um, reaching. I'll try to reach out to a few people. Great. Thanks. So, are you running? No, I was uh, helping with campaigns. Oh. Okay. I was, um, I was doing election stuff. <laughs> so I have one more thing, and it's it's just uh, new business, and we can um, uh, certainly pick it up later. I know we're we're very very busy, and we've talked about a lot of uh, action items we have um, to do tonight. Um, but one of the things we talked about in our last meeting was an urban renewal plan, and how we are currently operating without one. And uh, you know, I think in our uh, conversation about the industrial zones, we thought. Well, maybe that might be an interesting area to focus on, either for urban renewal or e even for just some master planning. So it's something I have been thinking about. I've been, um, I reviewed some of the plans that I worked on in Lowell, um, w which always had an active urban renewal plan of one kind or the other. Um, and if the board is interested in starting to take a look at something like that, it's certainly um, information that we could provide. Um, I took it upon myself to consider industrial that we don't have to. Um, I, an urban rural plan can be, um, you know, really any area or any focus. Um, but this seemed one that, like one that had come up, one that we were interested in talking about in terms of preservation of land use um, and, uh, I, you know, other topics as they relate to renewal. So um, if, you, if you'd like us to start taking a look at that, we're happy to do so. And you suggested you knew some places? There were, I mean, we had discussed this, um, you know, some possible sites with Jenny. Right, those were related, I think, to blighted, yeah, blighted. properties mm -hmm. um, throughout town. I think we had identified five potential properties that fell into that category. But those were properties. It's a little that, different, though. That was those are properties that were uh, what do you call non uh, They weren't buildable lots. That's why I thought they were. But some were, some weren't. I, I am happy to see that one of those properties is currently under construction or in getting renovated. That that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, there are some others that are still in the same shape that they were previously. So this is a picture of the industrial urban renewal area in Lowell. It's 108 acres. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine ours would be this large. Um, That's Arlington. Can, <laughs> it looks like any spur, kind of. We always used to call it fur. Um, this is one way to do it. Um, I think, you know, there, a lot of the urban renewal activity I've seen that's been done in Arlington is a really small scale. Mm -hmm. um, one of the benefits of um, putting together a plan like this is that you look at parcel aggregation for larger parcels so that you can build obviously larger buildings on them and it makes a lot of sense in industrial zones. Um, my, only, <laughs> my only concern is that at, at some point you have to put a map together that says these are the properties that we want to take and aggregate and build something on. Um, and I can't imagine that that is a comfortable conversation in this town. Um, obviously, this is a plan that was done over very blighted property, although a very active, active industrial zone as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so we had a lot of conversations with property owners, um, established clearance areas, demo areas, um, you know, areas of environmental cleanup. These were acquisitions um, that we had to propose. This would be another part of an urban renewal plan. We would propose what properties that the board would be willing to acquire um, to then uh, do some industrial development with, as well as a list of potential acquisition parcels, et cetera. So the idea is that eventually you'll come up with great big industrial parcels for dis disposition, and then you will dispose of them to a humongous lab developer or you know somebody along those lines. 
I will say I worked on this project for two years, and you can see um, one of these maps is just so great, I think, in terms of access. This is active freight right here with two spurs off it. I couldn't give this property away. Mm -hmm. Nobody would take it. Um, it is, it, you know, it's, uh, it's contaminated. It has a, you know, a whole host of issues. But again, I think what we have to keep in mind is, um, you know, preserving industrial uh, space in Arlington that previously revolved around, you know, the rail that we turned into a bike trail, the Mill Brook, which we rerouted, um, you know, really how much, uh, uh, you know, of this, of, of the kind of industrial uses that we've seen put out, say, in the last, um, you know, the, the report that Jane recommended, et cetera, you know, how much of this do we really likely see happening? You know, if these are sort of what's going on in other portions of the state, you know, large, large industrial areas, do we then focus on our industrial area in a different way? Mm -hmm. Maybe not necessarily lab, et cetera. Maybe, maybe it is, you know, you don't have the blighted mill buildings like in other communities, whatever. Maybe we build our own mill building, and it is artists work live, um, you know, space, something like that. Um, or we can certainly put together, I think, um, a great plan for our industrial districts that would include a lot of those um, similar elements. So are you suggesting looking at doing one economic development plan for all of the industrial zone or just part? So it would be an, an urban renewal plan and I think the Commonwealth calls them urban renew and revi renewal and revitalization. And so we'd have to come up with a story. Arlington's industrial zones are so it would be all the, the zones. It would be all the zones. It could be. It could be as small as yeah, you know so one just area. One area. Okay, so you're not wedded to any particular part. Of it. Not necessarily. I I would say that short of this, and I think this is a lot of like the Myrak property. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, we would really be talking about which of these are going to take and clump together so that we can build a building on them, and uh, you know. That is, that's a conversation that yeah. we can have. You know what, I, I guess two things. One is I would be interested in going out and walking through there and thinking about it okay. before sort of saying what I think <laughs> about doing it. And, you know, that part, which is, you know, I think that includes the part where they're going to put up the self-storage building, mm -hmm. maybe. Dudley yes. Street, yes. Yeah, the that, new one or that, the, the other one? The, the new, new one. one. The new one. The new one. Is, I mean, there are a lot of small businesses there that do a lot of service for people who live in Arlington, and there's nowhere else for them to go in town. So it's not as easy as, you know, as just let's do an urban renewal plan and put the parcels together, because I think that it's not, I'm not clear that that would serve the town in terms of the businesses that are there. and where they like a lot of the automotive right. things that are there. So, you know, because the town did a, a, either a good or a bad job, depending how you look at it, in chasing automotive out of Mass Ave and, and Broadway and places like that. So, you know, it's ended up being not only in the industrial zone, but mostly now in the industrial zone. So I'd, I'd want to take a look and think about it as I walk down there personally. So I think... There, the, the main disti distinction between doing, say, an urban renewal plan or an industrial master plan is that were we to go through the prescriptive process of putting together an urban renewal plan, this board would retain their redevelopment authority right. that you don't currently enjoy without right. the active urban renewal plan. And that's okay. Maybe that's okay, right? Um, Can I just suggest to you, I, I really do think that the board should reread the Arlington Heights Neighborhood action, neighborhood action plan, because a lot of these topics were explored because it looked at not only Mass Ave, but also the industrial area directly behind, um, yeah, directly behind, um, between Park Street, Summer, and Mass Ave, that area mm -hmm. right there, yeah. which is a really interesting space, and. Is this um, that a lumber? Yeah. yeah, are those yeah. numbers on, on the, the other left side hand of side of Arlington? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's Lumber on the and west side of. Um, yeah, that's right there. It's Gold's Gym or whatever oh, it's yeah. called now. Mm -hmm. um, 
and some warehouse space over on that side. So you could do a plan that includes yes. Arlington Heights for and the industrial district. Yeah. Or just for that. I mean, can I ask a question that's on topic this time? <laughs> it's on topic. <laughs> yes. Yes. Do we have bandwidth to do this? Uh, I thought we, we were going to also look at the master plan. We have a lot to do. Mm -hmm. I think this has come up and, and uh, you know, bubbled to the top of my to-do list because I think it's important that the board understands, you know, what they enjoy as participating as part of a redevelopment authority or a planning board. And if we're not going to pursue, you know, an, an official urban renewal plan that gives you guys the authority to do X, Y, Z, then we should look at transferring any other property back to the town, you know, obviously for their, their, their maintenance and operations. And I think we should focus a little more on the work of the, pl the planning board aspect of this, of this particular board. I have no problem with that, what you're talking about. I just was thinking that we we're going to do the master plan, which is we really, are. really overdue. Yep. And we we're going to focus on that once we sort of cleared some of these other hurdles here. Unless you guys are desperate to own property. Uh, uh, that's not one of my no? okay. things. I don't think we I didn't join the board for that reason. I don't, I'm not desperate, to own, oh. I'm not desperate right. to own property, but we can accomplish more. I think by setting up one of these zones, then we could by updating doing an the urban master plan. By setting up an urban renewal plan, then we could by just updating the master plan. So there's some sort of balance there, but you know the potential to accomplish more, I think, is higher with an urban renewal plan. Can, can I say that there is a parcel that this board keeps coming back to as? criminally underutilized in this town, and that is the Russell Common lot. Right. And if I had to, today, identify a place where I would love to see an urban renewal plan created that this board really sink its teeth into, that would be the parcel. Yep. And the place across the street from it. Is that state-owned? No, no, the Myrax own it. No, no, the, the one with the... They just rent, oh. the state rents it, but they don't they rent it. it. Oh. So, we tr I agree with, I agree with okay. what Rachel said. We've talked about the potential of the Russell Common Lot. But, but I, I, I just want to say that, I don't know, six, seven years I've been on the board, we've always been talking about updating the master plan. And every, every says, oh, the master plan says this, the master plan does this, we're following the master plan, and then we, I just don't want to, we, we made a lot of promises. I don't think that the two are mutually exclusive. Okay. This is a long process. Yes. The urban renewal plan, okay. and this board, there will be a master plan, there will be a committee put together. It, it will not be this board. Correct that is solely responsible for moving forward the, um, with the consultant that we will hire, I'm sure. The work of the master plan, yeah. To, to create the master This board will have a lot of well, input to it. I was referring to not us. I was referring to them. They're clearly has the energy and the <laughs> I, uh, interest I, in this. Yeah, I, 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 you, the you, you know what I'm trying to get at. This came up is because I think um, Town Council is holding that for lack of an active plan, the ARB cannot um, own or hold property. And that seemed to be not, you know, the, the, the not taken exactly uh, under most positive terms by the board. And I definitely appreciate that. So given, I think, the board responsibility, you know, some of the other things we've done in the past, if we um, wanted to do a smaller plan, urban renewal, something like that, we can. Um, I don't. I agree with Rachel. I don't think they're necessarily mutually exclusive. Um, there's a lot that goes into an urban renewal plan, and it is very, very contentious. But that's not to say that we can't do it. 
I will say that in terms of me personally, I also have a lot of interest in master planning for Arlington South <laughs> and doing that sort of work. Now, whether that turns into an urban renewal plan or not, I would have to do my own research on. I don't know what level of blight you would have to show um, to have it really turn into, say, an urban renewal plan. That doesn't mean that it can't be mm -hmm. a master plan. That doesn't mean that we couldn't do it with a form-based code, something like that. Also, unlike some of the other properties, I don't know if this matters that uh, Russell Common is owned by the town. It is owned by the town. Okay, <laughs> you know, it's, it, well. Just a house in front by Mass Ave, we can move again. <laughs> It, it, Russell Commons is sort of funny. There's focus on that Atwood House property. I mean, my gosh. <laughs> there, you know, once upon a time before Mystic Street was aligned to Pleasant. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, that align. There was Russell Common, and it got a chunk taken out for that street alignment, and then it got turned into a parking lot. It's just the park that could not win. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's amazing to me that it stayed a parking lot for as long as it has. So I'm happy to it's criminally underutilized. Focus. <laughs> right, right. Do a little more focus on that. Right. So well, can't park there overnight. Do you have a special phone in the house or something? Um, all right. I appreciate your thoughts. Thank you. That's uh, that's uh, good info to have moving forward. Okay. Any other new business items? I have a brief one. Please. Um, I'm aware that the chair of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund Board approached. Yes. Uh, approach you asking basically to if it would be okay to recruit an ARB member so I have been recruited to um, <laughs> they said they you know I, they invited me to uh, participate in their efforts to develop an affordable housing overlay and I agreed so fantastic. I will be doing that fantastic great well power to you Steve <laughs> I, I admire your energy and bandwidth and passion so thank you so much and it would be great um you know if you are able to update the board as oh, absolutely. continues to move forward i know that that's something that um was in the housing production plan as a strategy and um the board was really supportive of so. great anything else all right uh so with that we will close new business and i will see if there is a motion to adjourn motion to adjourn i'll second take a vote starting with steve Yes. Jean? Yes. Ken? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much. Thank you.